Wait, yeah. Good morning, everybody. You got a girl beside me. Today is uh, Thursday, May 8th. I'd like to call the Economic Development Commission to order. Um, any comments or questions on the minutes? No. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Reports. Would you like to go first, Nancy? Oh, sure. So a very short and sweet report. We had a wonderful one-room schoolhouse bus tour and lecture at the end of April. Sad to say I was unable to make it, but the bus was more than half full, which was really great for us because they gave us a big 55-person bus. And one of the highlights of it was the last stop, which was Tomato Farm, where they not only had ice cream, but Don walked them to the front of the one-room schoolhouse, had a wonderful talk. They had 15 minutes extra. So we took them on a tour of how they make ice cream. So everybody there had a wonderful time. Other than that, we have our last meeting of the Registration Committee for Tri Simsbury this Friday to get all our ducks in a row for everybody that's checking in on, set on Sunday. And we're still doing the last minute plans on our 20th anniversary gala. There are still tickets available. We'd love to see some of you <coughs> come and dress up and learn how to Charleston and have a good time. And last but not least, this is the beginning of crunch time for us for membership and our new guide for 2015. So we're doing membership and advertising. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you. Oh, well, anytime. Mm -hmm. Anytime I can get here these days. It's wonderful. Sarah, you're up. Main Street Mart Partnerships. Thanks. Morning, everyone. Um, so I just want to start off by sure. very quickly mentioning that um, I've been asked to do uh, a presentation, a short presentation before the Board of Selectmen on economic development. Um, and I think a lot of it's very relevant today. Um, what I referenced, um, which I'm more than happy at another time to do with you guys, um, but the state of Connecticut in uh, <coughs> February 2014, the Department of Economic and Community Development just released what they call the power of place. Um, and it's called Weaving the Threads of Branding, Innovation, History, Art, and Tourism to the Fabric of Place. <clears throat> and they don't do this lightly. They do it because as the Department of Economic and Community Development, they recognize that these things are economic development catalysts, that all of these things. And, and as the state of Connecticut is really starting to look, I think, at economic development in a new way, I think what it's done for us is highlight that Simsbury has been on this right path for the last 25 years. Um, so really, some really interesting stuff came out of it, um, and I'm more than happy to send the documents over to Mark to share with the group. Um, but we have the Deputy Commissioner, Kip Bergstrom, coming out to Simsbury this Wednesday uh, to do a walk with uh, Main Street because we've told him that, you know, through his document, we believe that we're kind of the poster child for a lot of the initiatives and a lot of the ideas that he's been talking about. We're a great case study. Um, so he'll be coming out uh, Wednesday uh, to do a tour of Simsbury. <clears throat> the things that we are focused on, once again, are marketing Simsbury as a destination. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but we did make a week late, but we <coughs> did get into the Boston Globe. And um, again, I think this is, it's, it's important. It's talking about why we are a destination for, you know, everybody thinks of Boston and New York as kind of those central hubs. And for them to single out Simsbury and talk about why uh, people from Massachusetts should come down and, and spend time in our town, I think is really significant when you talk about uh, the attention that we're receiving. Um, we also have the Hartford Current coming up. The special section will be dropping on May 15th. So that's coming up. And that will focus, again, on this power of place. Um, we're talking about uh, Simsbury care careful planning. Uh, we're talking about Simsbury as a destination. It'll focus on some of the bike initiatives, uh, May being bike month and the bike people were here last month. It'll focus a little bit on the triathlon a couple days before, trying to get the public out at this point because registration will be pretty much over. We'll have 
finish stuffing all the goodie bags and what have you, um, but trying to get uh, residents out to, to participate in cheering on the athletes. Um, it will talk about the summer concert series at the Performing Arts Center. It talks about our library, which I think, you know, people, you don't just go there to, to take up books anymore. It's really becoming a hub for innovation and programming and, and small business development. And so it's focused on um, all of the ways that the library has become a meeting space. So I, I think it'll be a really interesting Trevor Simsbury article, and I'll have copies. Um, they send me about 1,500 extra copies of their sheets. Um, so I'll be able to give them to you. Uh, we're also, again, we work on creating infrastructure and programs that help retain existing businesses and help recruit new ones. Um, of note is their, the employer step up conference. Again, just a reminder, June 19th, it's at the Simsbury High School. It's going to go from 7 to 10.30 a.m. Um, and it's uh, held by the Department of Labor. And it's going to talk about with 10 other state agencies. It's going to reach out to small businesses and talk about some of the different programs that the state has been running. <coughs> Main Street um, has been working already collaboratively to match our small business owners with a lot of the state programs. Uh, several of our businesses has gone, have gone through the Small Business Express program, um, which has, you know, it was either uh, very low interest loans and or job creation bills. This one actually focuses a little bit on all of that. Um, and then the Department of Labor actually has some um, programs if people hire veterans or unemployed as well to try to, to get people back into the job force. So um, I encourage you all to attend at 8 a.m. They'll be start, they'll start with presentations from different state agencies um, and it's right in our backyard. <coughs> My cheat sheet. <coughs> Uh, the Main Street Investment Fund grant. The Board of Selectmen at their last meeting approved it unanimously. Um, myself and Hiram, Hiram actually will be the lead uh, managing the grant should we receive it. Um, I'm assisting in writing the grant. Um, but this is, again, this is an implementation of our downtown charrette. You know, we have these amazing planning documents, um, but we, we're, I think as a town, we're really excited to move forward on some concrete projects and move forward on seeing this um, <clears throat> come to life. So um, we have applied or will be applying for by the end of May a Main Street Investment Fund grant. It's through the Department of Housing this time instead of uh, last time it was under. Yeah, to the Department of Housing. Um, and it has to be part of the, your project has to be part of the um, downtown, pro downtown plan, which is our charrette. Uh, the five objectives that we're focused on are improving the east-west connections and crossings on Meadow Street to Iron Horse Boulevard uh, via Wilcox and Station Street for pedestrians and bicycle as well as vehicles through streetscape improvements, <coughs> improve small business performance, which are the existing businesses, by correcting parking issues and adding more parking spaces directly adjacent to the core business community, changing Station Street from a one-way to a two-way street, thus removing the negative impact of retail eclipsing. That's also a huge safety issue when it comes to uh, the Chief of Police, pedestrian issues, um, things of that nature. <coughs> Highlight Wilcox Street as the major retail corridor through site work, thereby encouraging potential new business growth um, and pro by providing amenities and infrastructure in this critical area, which we've identified as our major retail corridor through the Charette and create an atmosphere conducive to a diverse selection of housing choices on upper levels, adding much needed people living in downtown. Um, so um, all of the department heads, um, the, the engineering department, the Department of Public Works and Hiram, um, along with Main Street's help, will be working on that. Um, the grant is due at um, the end of May. And then finally, <coughs> um, I think as Nancy mentioned, the other thing that we focus on are events that add to the vibrancy of downtown. I already talked about the triathlon, and, and Nancy did as well, but um, there's Strut Your Mutt, which will be at Paw Meadow Park on May 10th. Um, there's the concert series, as I mentioned, at the Performing Arts Center. Um, and uh, we're currently now working with the veterans <coughs> groups um, to talk about the veterans memorial that will be happening on Hot Meadow Street. They've gone through the land use sports <coughs> and at this point, um, and I'm working with uh, both veterans groups. Um, it's going to be a place of uh, reflection, of education, uh, all the sacrifices that the veterans have made, both um, the ones that are currently serving as the ones that gave their lives. Um, there's going to be four columns which will be dedicated to those that, from Simsbury that have actually given their life in uh, service of their country. Um, but it's going to be very prominent on Hot Meadow Street uh, adjacent to the library. And um, so that's, that's coming up. How, how big is the grant you're applying for? $500,000.
And what is that going to be used for in terms of writing the grant? Obviously, you have to put projects in there. Yes. What we are have, the projects? Um, the, the five projects that I mentioned were, just to simplify, the, the portion behind Eno Memorial Hall, which the Shred identified as our major retail corridor, we're going to be doing site work and infrastructure, which includes everything from um, pedestrian issues, parking <coughs> issues, um, changing the one-way streets, you know, we're gonna we're getting that site ready so that all of that amazing, you know, the pictures that everybody oohed and odd where we talked about future development from the Charette, that's really the catalyst. It also corrects an existing business problem which is hampering the existing business community there, which is um, lack of shared parking. <coughs> and as the town well, is just on that and that was my question, is a, is this with the parking garage? Well, uh, we don't have a parking garage, so let me be very cautious about deck. that. Um, there will be there will be some sort of parking plan yet to be designed because it has to go through design, but there will be a, a additional parking. And what um, input is the town going to have with regard to what the projects are with this five hundred thousand? Well, the town's already what we're submitting <coughs> is going to come before EDC because it's I already. certainly have certain opinions <coughs> with regard to the different projects going on in town and where they're located. Uh, and, and I know there's retail there, but there's also retail in other areas as well. Agreed. So how's that all going to be determined before the grant goes in? Because once the grant goes in, you now have a specific project that the grant has yes. to apply to. So how's that process going to work? We've, we've already met, and, and Mark Deming was there on behalf of the EDC. We've already met to determine. It, it, there's a lot of, I, I, and, I, and we've, we've been through this in 2011 when I came before the, this commission and talked about it again. I, it can't apply to the Performing Arts Center. That's that's number one. Okay. It, I'm, saying, no, no, no. I'm not saying where it can't. I'm saying <clears throat> it's a long street. There's okay. a lot of areas. Taken I will let me finish. Let me finish. It's a long street. There's a lot of areas. I would think the CDC would want to vet that out considerably before we determine where different things are going to go or what we're going to apply for. I, I think that if we're applying for a half a million dollars in grants, and usually that is a matching. No. Is that a matching? Well, it's not matching. No. It's not matching this no. one because the other one was, right? No. no. Wasn't the other one? Uh, no. Wasn't the town on the last one that we talked about going to have to put in money to For do that? Grant? Not on the mainstream investment fund. Well, when we were considering the parking deck last time, there was a grant with money that the town was going to have to put in to complete it. Well, well that's. Is that, that's what I, I'm just, but, but that being said, if you're applying for a half a million dollars and part of it's going to go to a parking deck and the town's then going to have to put in more money, I think that's a, a major consideration that has to be vetted <coughs> out. Well, Lou, um, I, well, I'll say this. Number one, we didn't take this from nowhere. This, all of the grant objectives have directly been taken from the shred, which the town and the residents have vetted. Um, it's gone through every land use board commission, including this one, board of selectmen. I mean, this is our working document. We didn't veer from that. I mean, well, I can show you the slides. I'm so not saying you're veering from it. All I'm saying is, the the, the shred said in this in this center zone. Yes. Which is a large area. Yes. These are the things that need to occur. Yes. Okay. But this with has been that being property. With that being said, all I'm saying is, why wouldn't why why is there resistance to? We haven't discussed. Since two years ago, I don't believe this board has discussed how best to apply for such a grant of a half a million dollars. I, is that, have we? I may not have been here, but if we haven't, I would think we'd want to. And that's all I'm asking, that this board have some input and in say on where we're, where we're gonna uh, apply this grant and how we're going to apply for the grant with particular projects. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I think it should That's, be. That's all. Well, well again, I, the chairman was present at, at the meetings, um, was included. This was a meeting called by the first selectman, Mary Glassman. Um, but, you know, Main Street is also, I mean, we're the one, I'm the one writing the grant. So, you know, one of the things that we've always wanted to accomplish within the, the tenor of these different grants is we can only do a certain amount with this grant. It had, there's, there's a lot of things you can do, there's a lot of things you cannot do. So we looked at, as we did a couple of years ago, we looked at wait, what else can we do, okay, before we go back to you know the, the reason that we applied last time, what else can we do? And there was talk about, and Mark, correct me wrong, there was talk about what other projects would make sense. And there's not another project that makes sense currently within the f confines of this grant. Yeah, but Sarah, what Lou's trying to say is that 
you apply for the grant, if the CDC hasn't had input into it, and then you receive the grant, then we're locked into what was written in the grant. Right. Agreed, that, but that's it's, wrong. it's not the EDC. It's, it's always, the EDC doesn't contract out for grants. We're it's the town of Simsbury. We're just saying we should have an input to it. That's all. That's, that's all. the point he's making. That's a very valid point, yeah. I think. And the chairman of the Economic Development Commission was involved in the meetings. Well, okay. <laughs> but don't you think we should have input? We have to go back and say, to apply for these grants, you must already have approved the plan, in this case, the charrette. The downtown plan. Right. Otherwise, yes. you can't apply for it. Absolutely. You're applying for stuff that's already in the plan, correct? Yes. Okay. You have to. So I think, uh, and they do comply with that. Maybe what you have to elaborate more, more closely on is what other options would there be at least present between the, to the commission here so that they have a better understanding if there's five options or three options you chose those two well do we as a town have a priority list from the charrette of here is the 50 projects that need to get done within there and here's how we've ranked them in order of priority so my point my point is right. if, if you are asking that question sitting here on this commission that's the problem. This commission right. should be part of that process, and everybody on this commission should absolutely know what the priorities are of if we if we get money from somewhere for economic development in the downtown area, we should kind of know already what the priority is, and that's all I'm saying. So, I was going to say it's a combination of things. The, the, the downtown plan is, is certainly one thing. <clears throat> I don't think there's a number of 1 through 50 or 1 through 10 or whatever, but there were a variety of things that were shown in that plan. The documents that are really important are the phase one marketing study that we did a while ago. That's just fairly new. That was 2013 into 2013. And the other overall guiding plan that the town has is the planning commission document that was done back in 2007. And there's a whole list of projects for that. <coughs> a lot of the ones downtown. So as this was being constructed, and we're just putting this together now, you know, we're using all those documents, <coughs> existing documents that I'm sure you've all read and digested thoroughly. You know, when you're not trouble sleeping or whatever. But those are, those are exactly where those things came from, Lou. So if there are specific things that people would like us to focus on as we put this thing together, you know, let us know. I mean, that's kind of what we're, we're saying now. We've got till the end of the month to, to put it together. We've still got a little bit of time. <coughs> but if you notice the way Sarah read those, there's a certain amount of flexibility there in terms of landscaping and streetscaping. And a lot of this money is going to go toward putting together specific plans that we're going to need a lot of input in during that process. And I think that's one of the other reasons why we've tried to cultivate relationships with DECD and the Department of Housing through this whole process. Is last time we thought we had a really excellent plan, and we still think we did, um, but this time it, it's really essentially the same thing. We're just trying to move it forward in a little bit different fashion. So if you have other ideas, you know, let us know. It's the door is closed. Now, plus, I mean, but if we've already vetted, we've already vetted the charrette and all the stuff in there, so anything that gets picked would really generally be, it's already been pre-approved, it's already well, basically saying, hey, they, they've done the arms and legs, they're applying for the grant, they're, I mean, if we have to approve it through here, that's just going to kind of hold them up, right? I mean, let's just... Well, I, I think the charrette talked about parking, but I don't think the charrette ever said a parking deck behind Eno moving on to the uh, private owner's property next door. I don't think it ever said that. Well, the charrette did call for three different parking decks in the downtown, one of which is is adjacent to what the area that we're talking about. It, it absolutely did. Well, in three in two others. Yes. Oh um, well. Yeah. Why that one? Post the others other two and, might be on the and how they're constructed and and whether we want to spend the money on that. It, the shred has. I'm not saying they're outside the shred. <clears throat> what I'm saying is the shred had a lot of information, a lot of ideas that have been vetted. That's great. Now we and all I'm saying is. As a commission, I would think we'd be part of that process. It could be the best idea in the world. It may not be. There may be other options. But we have, th for this particular grant, this is the first that, as a commission, we're hearing about it. Mark, you know, Mark might have been there, but this is the first we're hearing about it. Okay. And it's going in, and <coughs> we haven't really had any say whatsoever. Well, can, I, can I make a suggestion? Because, you know, again, I think what's happening is, there's a difference between, I think, how what the commission wants and sees as its role being, and, and there's still kind of that gap between what's happening. 
And my suggestion is then is if the commission would like to, if the EDC would like to give some direction, for example, to what it feels its priorities um, or sh should be, suggested priorities should be for the shred or for whatever, that would be helpful, I think, not just to Main Street, not just to the town, but to some of the other organizations. Because, you know, kind of working off of the, of nothing that's been created except for the, the documents that have been vetted, implemented by all the land use boards and commissions, including the Board of Selectmen, I mean, that's, this is what we're working on. We're working on the implementation versus, you know, you have a certain amount of time to do this, you have a certain amount of constraints to do this. So, I mean, obviously, you know, some input, I think, or direction maybe from the commission as a whole would be great, I think, moving forward for all of these things versus just saying well, that's why. That's all I'm asking for. Right. That's, but, that's but what I'm asking grow. for, but it has to come before us but, with time to discuss it. That's all I'm asking <laughs> to provide input. But, I mean, but the meetings, I mean, you know, Main Street's meeting with the town, the Board of Selectmen's involved, the planning department's involved. It's like, I don't know, if it has to come through the, these meetings, which are only once a month, like, it's going to slow things down. You, you said you attended the... You, Marked it. We did. It, I mean, the first selectman at the meeting who can bring the information back. I mean, yeah. we should let it move at a faster pace. I mean, at the end of the day, the first selectman oh. is the one who convened this meeting. Okay. She convened it. We had all the department heads there. Mark was invited on behalf of the EDC and Main Street because we're going to be the ones writing the majority of the grant with help from the department heads. So, I mean, like I said, you know, I'm more than open to, and, and again, this. We haven't gotten the grant yet. We've left some of this open. The important portion is the design portion of it and how we move forward with this. Um, and so I'm more than open to that. And, and what I'd like to suggest then is maybe the EDC in the next meeting or next couple of meetings kind of sets its priorities or its focus and, and the different ways we can help. Does the um, Board of Selectmen have a list of priorities of items identified in the charrette that they would like to see done first? I mean, have they? And the first know. and the first and most tangible priority out of the charrette was the new zoning regulations for downtown. That was completed. After that, there was not a prioritization of the different projects. It was understood that projects would come online as funds or, or catalysts were made available. For, for this particular piece, because of the grant language, because it can't be used for uh, repair, it can't be used for... Um, <coughs> I'll go to it very quickly. There's a lot of ways that it cannot be used. Um, can only be used, shall be used for improvements to property owned by the municipality. They need to be part of the town commercial plan. There's ineligible expenses, which are ordinary repair maintenance, improvements to remedy health, housing, safety code violations, non permanent structures, etc. The, and and the, the corridor that we've talked about has been in the shred identified as the major retail corridor. Um, with meeting all the other caveats, this was the, the project that best fit into the grant request. And it was also our strongest nominee, it was, it's our strongest application. When we went for this the first time, out of the 69 um, applications, ours in rounds one and two were ranked at the top. So this is a very strong project. Um, we, we have to. We're going to change some of the language. We're going to refresh it to update it to the power place that the state is moving towards. Um, but other than that, it, it is the strongest nomination. Sarah, so when you um, wrote the grant, well, we're in the process. Still. Okay, I mean, it hasn't been done yet. When you finish the project, uh, the grant the application, you have to within the restrictions that you just gave us. Are you? going to apply for projects if the grant comes through are you restricted only to those projects or do you get a block grant and again assuming the restrictions you can switch around a little bit within uh, that flexibility there's a little bit of flexibility but it, it is going to be tied to this particular area and it's going to be tied to um, at least, you know, you, you have to you have to set forward a good plan. You can't be too unspecific, otherwise the, the state says, well, you don't really know what you're talking about. So again, what I've done is we've pulled out the objectives from the charrette that specifically dealt with this area. We've we've A through like E, and we've reiterated that back into the grant. You know, the other supporting documents that we had, just to tell you, um, was not just the grant, it was 
the 2010 charrette, the zoning regulations for town center for 2011, the design guidelines for town center for 2012, the street sa streetscape improvement plan, which is still in progress from the town, the programming needs assessment for the Century Senior Center, which was done in 2011, the EPA technical assistance for sustainable communities uh, project was done in 2012, the current state of con State of Connecticut Plan of Conservation and Development Plan. So, this is none of this is done lightly. Um, this grant is a, is a large undertaking, much like the Performing Arts Center and, and the Steep Grant that the town is also going after. I mean, these are carefully planned. These all of these things that I read have been vetted through all of these boards, all of these commissions, everything. So you have some, but not great flexibility. So what I'm actually getting trying to get to if the grant is granted to us maybe that's the time to bring that maybe in front of it this is what we have we have a little flexibility to do this and maybe what who suggests maybe that's the time that's the time to refine things and yes. the but I, I don't think yeah, you can change the project you can't change the project yeah, if they put in for a parking deck if they put in for a parking deck, it's a parking, a parking deck. deck. That's right. And they're going to get a certain amount of money, and then the town's going to be have to fund the rest of it. In the last go around, it was a big number. It was a million dollars or yeah, million four. Million four, and you were get, getting how much? Five hundred thousand. So that's a million dollars for the town to put in the parking deck, and that's well, honestly wait, my biggest concern as to as there's, to how that was going to work. There's other there's other money. There's other capital project money that was in for the same thing. Again, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't done lightly. No, I know it's not done lightly, and I, I applaud the grant in this, aspect. In 2018, in the CIP currently, there's a $1.8 million proposed hold for, let me just check it, because we have to, again, show that this would that we have the funds, to, and, and, and I don't want to get too right. hung up on the parking deck, because that's one small piece of, of what this project is, but there's a budget in the 2018 CIP. It is only for... Um, Town, it's the town charrette basically for the town charrette project. Okay, the, the, and that's my, I, I, yep. I get it. I applaud the the grant effort. I have no problem with it. <coughs> I only have a problem with. I, I don't think we have a prioritization of, of uh, within the charrette in our center zone. What are the top priorities for economic development? I don't think we have that. I think we should, and I think this commission should be the one that helps uh, uh, initiate that. That's number one. We don't have that, and we're not discussing it here. So now, even if we get this money, it, there's there's money in the budget towards the charrette somewhere down the road, mm -hmm. but there's a lot to that charrette, and it's a large area, and you there's no doubt in my mind. Once the grant has been approved for us, those projects are the projects that must be done. Or you lose that money. And the, the projects are, are all, they all have to be market driven. And so wherever there's activity and wherever there is pressure points, that, that's where we've tended to focus on. So while the area that, that was studied was a, a fairly sizable area, all the way from Drake Hill to, to Iron Horse at, at the north end, there are certain pressure points that we're trying to deal with right now. I mean, there are certain buildings that are for sale, there are certain activities that are going on. This one-way street's been discussed for years with regard to, so those are the kinds of things that we, we put in because those are known pressure points. Now, again, if there are other things that the, that the board would like to see in or like to see considered, let us know what the heck they are. Hi, Hiram, yeah. this grant is due at the end of this month? Right. Yes. Okay. Here's the problem. There should have been a discussion about this two or three months ago. Somebody didn't think about doing this yesterday, okay? So two or three meetings ago, we should have had an outline of, okay, we're going to apply for this grant in May, and here are some of the items that we want to specifically put in there so that we could have all had an opportunity to provide input. Because otherwise, this commission is useless. We're not, you're not taking advantage, in my opinion, to meet once a month is probably an issue also because if we're truly going to work on economic <coughs> development, and that means a lot of things, creating jobs, you know, developing properties, uh, marketing different types of things that benefit the businesses in this town, you can't do it just once a month, and you certainly can't do it on the fly like we're doing it. Everybody, it sounds like, based on what Lou said, 
that everybody else knows about this except us in terms of details. And that's all we're saying, I think, is that, you know, presumably <clears throat> we all have an expertise here, everybody on this commission, otherwise we, sh we wouldn't be here, and we might be able to provide some input. Not disagreeing with, you know, the, the concept and applying for the money and everything else. I, I, I think it's just a question of communication. Okay, well, let's, can we move forward then? Yeah. Say, I, let's I let's say, if you have ideas, you know, let us know. No, no, no that, that's, that's back in two. No, no, Dave, it's not. We'd like to know what, what you guys are proposing, and we'll give comment on it. You want us to do the grant? Of course that's not. not. That's not the no, question. Not. The question is, if Lou had a number of thoughts, I'm sure, about things that he thinks are important. Sarah just told you what we're, we're asking for. We've got some time. We'll have a special meeting next week if you want to talk about it again. We can do that. We can work these things in. You have specific ideas you want to do. That's fine, but let's 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 move on from yes. the fact that okay, you didn't know. Let's let's move on and get and move forward. That's and, what yeah. I'm saying. And this is a final thing. It, you know, we did apply for this, and, and I did bring this before the commission a couple of years ago, and there there weren't any there there weren't the same issues. And so with the with the shred being done in 2010, if if, if this commission would like to take and prioritize the grant uh, the sh the charrette projects. I, Nothing's holding you guys up from doing that. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that I, this has not been sidelined. I, 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 this is this almost virtually the same project, refreshed pieces that I brought before this commission two years ago. So that maybe that's my fault. I didn't realize that there would be uh, maybe so many questions. Uh, one of the questions so in, that comes into play here, and I don't know where it stands. Uh, there was the senior center and and where that would go, and there would talk, was talk about that, and there's been meetings and. Where does that stand? Because that would have some relevance I, on. You know, you know, you know we, we've we've. Because, and that's part of my point. Yeah, like, does yeah, that fit is, in? Um, you know, I where's that going to go? Maybe it's. I was on the you know sub the senior center subcommittee. Um, I was a non-voting member, but I was put on as staff. Uh, they had a couple of meetings with the residents. At the end of the day, they voted. It was a very small group of residents that wanted a new senior center. They did vote to make a recommendation that they would like a brand new senior center. Um, and I believe their first priority, Rich, because you were on the committee with me, their first their first suggestion was Bushy Hill and Stratton Park, Stratton Brook. Yeah, that's that is true. Okay. Um, however, however. Yes, there's a lot of however. However. <laughs> one of the one of the difficulties has been the number of sites, and a very comprehensive analysis was done looking at sites. Uh, there were two committees over time that have looked at as many as 12 sites. They essentially narrowed it down to four, and three of them are in the center. So interestingly enough, even though people uh, indicate a preference for item for sites one through four, the, the majority of the sites are in the center. Which in my was, eyes, uh, wait, wait. I, I'd rather see that, yes. uh, have people in the Senate, it's my personal opinion. That being said, wait. then, okay, where is it going to go and how does this well, grant fit into that? that that's I think, just a bigger yep, kind of picture. Let me finish, and maybe I can give you the answer. So we did not write the grant based on the Senior Center staying at Eno because I, I don't think that we wanted to, that's a, that's a moving piece that I, I don't know where that will end up yet. So in trying to be fair, what we did is this grant accomplishes uh, taking care of the senior center community while they're at Eno, okay, until whatever decision is made, and, and I don't know that, I, you know, I don't vote on that. Whatever decision is made by the town, by all the residents, um, this helps them while they're at Eno for the, you know, whatever. Um, but, it, but it wasn't planned for the senior center. This was really planned as, as a, it's planned to help the existing business community you know, the town is still currently, and you, I know you've been a huge pro, the town has still been looking at trying to get the um, the state parking lots, okay? Um, and and uh, we had a bill, which we're hoping to reintroduce, you know, so, so as we start taking up some of that for what I think we all agreed, you know, having 365 day a year development on some of those commuter lots is in the best interest of the town, in the vibrancy, in the tax base, everything. But you have to solve some of the parking and the safety and the, the, the ancillary street issues as well. And so as we're looking at that and we're working with the state to try to, con to get the conveyance bill, all of this kind of comes into 
it puts more pressure on that area as well. Again, that's why, at least in our minds, and at least in, in the town, it raised in priority. So it wasn't to address the senior center. I think if the senior center decides to stay at Eno, it will absolutely complement that. It will be, you know, will be out far enough that we can design things so that it would be a great complement to the senior community. But that they still have to choose what they're going to do, and the town has to choose the focus. Okay, that was a specific question that the board of selectmen asked two yep. years ago: was, Are these are these connected? And we said no, not they necessarily. Can't be. And so there's no design. The design hasn't been done yet anyway for, for any of these things. So there's flexibility to that to that extent, to that regard. So the Board of Selectmen was clear on that two years ago, and that hasn't changed. That, that's a separate. Okay. So in the effort of time here, um, is this something you'd like to have a special meeting on? Um, I priority? would think. Yes. Uh, um, Could I ask well, one question first? Go right ahead. Where is the task force? It's well, been established well, on this whole a, thing. We're going to get they're an they're on, they're on the No, no, I know, but are they are they involved in this grant information? No. Well, if I wait, might wait, just wait. say, we we let me mentioned just make that. point, okay? One of the reasons I voted to support the task force, as long as it reported through the EDC, was not because I had questions about the task force particularly, but the question was the viability of the EDC. You either have an economic development commission that's important to help grow the grand list, or you don't. And everything seems to be going around well, this EDC. I, I, to, that's why wait, I wait, asked the question. To be fair, um, the economic not, not development with fairness. You, no, the economic development task force has been at the at the previous meeting um, to, this Tuesday. Tuesday had been briefed on. The problem is that they're still in their infancy, so until the working committees are up and moving, they can't tackle any specific projects. Right now, they're trying to find the focus, who's gonna do what, the action plan. So I, I do believe that all of those concerns are valid, Dave, but it's still a little bit early for the task force to be weighing in or doing specific projects. They did hear about um, the, the director of, the, the commissioner of the Department of Housing came out, Von Klein, with the president or the executive director of uh, Partnership for Strong Communities, David Fink, they came out and did a specific talk to the Economic Development Task Force on housing. And uh, we did talk about the Main Street Investment Fund because it comes through that department. So they're involved to a certain extent in, in what's happening, but they're, they're like this commission as well in that they're still digesting the shred. They're digesting all this information so that they can determine what their priorities are. Well, okay. that might explain the task force's position. But that's not the EDC's position. The EDC's been there for 40 years. And I think Lou makes a great point. I think we should be Well, I, 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 to move it forward then, let's have a, a meeting next week sometime to get, you know, working meeting just to look at the specifics, maybe an outline of what's going to be the grant <coughs> and whoever on the commission wants to go, goes. And so we, if you, you could know. let us know what what morning would work for you? Uh, who's available uh, any particular days next week? Thursday. Thursday? Is good. Yeah. Special meeting? Yeah. And the purpose of that meeting is to review this grant or to review prioritization? No, in specifically for no, this just grant. an outline of what's going to be in the grant. I would really suggest, too, if you have specific ideas, bring them. Because looking at the outline of the grant is not going to help. Yeah. If you have specific things based on those documents that I talked about, that's, that's what you'd like to do hear. do it Thursday. Can we do it Wednesday or Friday? I can't do Wednesday. Wednesday's my board Friday. Meeting. Okay. Does Friday work? This Friday, I have no, no. Um, 16. Um, yeah. The 16. Oh. Yes, but just know that we're pushing up a week before the grant deadline. So, well, uh, obviously, you would the grant tight. I mean, why don't we do the grant and see if the people have other ideas they'd like to put into? So, you have a lot of homework to do in a week. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but. I mean, we're not proposing alternate projects at this point. The, I mean, so well, what's I in there is what's the in there. So, has already so approved. We have to exactly. move forward. So I, needed I, I, a, I needed a vote from the legislative body to move forward. I, I mean, I, I had to get I, on I one day. I guess most of the objection was not on, was not on the grant. Well, it was on the specific, the particulars of this project. I guess most of the objection was not on, it was not on the specific, the particulars of this project, but how it was chosen relative to others. So I don't know that the grant's kind of baked, right? Well, I mean, it, what, what, is it useless to have a meeting because you've already gone to the Board of Selectmen, and if we ever came up with something different, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have time to get it in anyway. So is well, that this is this is my suggestion instead. I think that th we're already moving forward with the grant. So maybe if there's a, one or two of you that are most interested, I could sit down with you and Hiram, and we can kind of go through in more detail what we're proposing and get your ideas and your feedback. 
And then in the interim, it might be important either to hold a special meeting or to, to determine some of the priorities that the EDC would like to see coming out of the charrette might be more productive, because then it gives some um, direction to everybody else. Well, if we, I think we need to have a special meeting to come up with our list. Because if there's another grant that comes down the road for an opportunity, well, maybe, maybe a special meeting proactive. next week is not. Well, there's also yeah. state grants and there's also CDB. Yeah, this is only one of many that the town goes after that we can potentially go after. Because our list of priorities, then the Board of Selectmen should have a list of priorities and hopefully they're similar. Well, they should be <laughs> identical. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Over time, they should Over be better out and be identical. Be, right. Well, do you want to put this thing on the, the next regular meeting's agenda then to talk about specifically items so people have enough time to do some homework? Because we just can't come into a meeting and say, I think we should do this. I mean, you have to really go back to all these documents that have been out there that lay the ground foundation. Well, I think it's an ongoing, I don't think in one meeting you're going to solve all prioritization of economic development. I think it's an ongoing. Uh, work that involves other commissions at different times, but I yes, it should it be on the agenda. Should it be on the agenda more than once? Absolutely. Right. And should it be a goal of this EDC to develop that and develop one that everybody you know has buy into? We have a lot of documents that you know it's not like we're starting from scratch. Yeah, but we should have a prioritization list. And when I say we should have, I don't mean just the EDC. I mean the town. Should everybody in the town, if someone asked Hiram or someone asked someone in the first selectman's office or someone asked someone on EDC, what are your prioritizations for the center zone in economic development? It should be the same thing. And it should be readily at the top of people's minds. Uh, that's what we should work towards and how we get there. I'm okay, so it. then let's not consider a special meeting unless people want to discuss this particular. I, I think it's a little. Lou, too late do you have an that. interest in sitting down, or maybe somebody else on the commission will take two commissioners to sit down and at least, we're, we're in the process of writing this, but obviously we do want feedback. I'm sorry, I, you know, the chairman was involved, but maybe, obviously now I'm understanding that the commissioners would also like to be involved. I, you've expressed interest, Lou. Is there somebody else that is expressed? I would, I would, yeah. But I, I would rather do it at a, at a meeting, and if it, it it's not going to work to anyone's advantage to have a special meeting because we're already too late and the Board of Selectmen's already approved it. I think this is a, just an example that we can use to better how the commission operates. I would suggest discussing it at one of our meetings. If we want to have a special meeting to discuss it at some point, that's fine. But I, I, I think uh, the commission in general should discuss you know, what, yeah, what, what was looked at, how this how we derived at this particular grant and the projects within this grant and whether there are any others that maybe the commission or the town feel strongly about that should be looked at next time something pops up. Okay. But I, I think we'd take it as a learning lesson. Well, if unless you don't think you need it, I'd be more than happy to review the draft beforehand to react to it and see if there's anything that could be embellished or you know, enhance, you know, so before you submit you like it. to meet with uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. You know, when you're, I don't know how much time, you know, when the first draft will be available, but I'd be more than happy to, you know, look at it if you think okay. that'd be beneficial. That would. You can do the same. But I, I will fine. put on for the next, the next uh, meeting and thereafter an ongoing discussion of priorities. So, people should be prepared, commissioners should be prepared to bring those ideas with them so that over a period of time we can have a list. This is regarding downtown. And so if other steep, other grants come up that uh, we be prepared to say these are, these are things that we think are important to address. And I think it involves uh, bringing in other commissions or, or staff that may have those lists, capital projects list that are out there um, and how they fit into the okay. economic development uh, for the town in general, whether it's center zone or outside the center zone. Any other questions on this particular issue? Thank you, sir. Okay, Simsbury Meadows master plan update. Uh, we're doing a little uh, video, uh, an overview literally of the Simsbury Meadows area. Um, I've completed four little interviews with people representing 
biking, trail running, boating, and birding. Uh, and we will then weave in um, uh, uh, a dialogue and a history of the Sunsbury Meadows area. We'll put that together. Uh, hopefully that'll come together in the next couple of weeks and we'll use that when we start some informal uh, discussions with other board and commissions as to what uh, they might want to see in the area above and beyond the limited things that we can do there right now. Is there, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I would encourage um, the commissioners, if you're ever near Glastonbury, the project's almost complete. Their boathouse, their new senior center is open, and the whole park is almost done. I was there last week. Um, it's a beautiful structure. Um, it really should be a standard that you should try to get to in the Simsbury Meadows area. It's a great facility, um, so take the time to stop by and check it out, and you'll understand what the potential is for the meadows. And was uh, was money? Is there money in the budget somewhere somehow for this? Yes. Plan. I know that's something we 25, asked for. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay, there is. Okay. There's one hundred and twenty thousand is put into the budget for the trail. Right. And it's twenty-five thousand dollars in the budget for the master plan, which I think is um, a, 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 there's a priority, and I, did, I think there's something that we right. should really. So some of the money we can we can use uh, in various ways, but that's been allocated for us. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay. EDC. EDC website and work update. We distributed to you here. This is an outline of uh, what Chris and Carolyn have been working on about what we'd like to have in an EDC website. And uh, as you can see, it's slightly longer than what we currently have on one page and uh, a little bit more interactive. So. Uh, we would <coughs> hope to start working with our new director of communications here uh, in town to see what part of this um, she can, uh, along with ourselves, begin to weave together. Um, when we came up with the outline, um, I, we came up with the big ideas and then I went on our website, our current town website, and looked at all the resources we have and tried to logically organize um, how people would use this. So um, we want input from all of you regarding your thoughts on where things are located in here and if there's additional information or links that we should be including. We think we've gotten almost everything um, based on what's available. Um, and we looked at several towns' websites um, throughout Connecticut. Um, and took the best, what we thought was the best practices from those websites to try to apply them to what we envision ours to look like. Um, now that the budget's passed, I suppose it soon we'll get the money approved for our virtual town hall contract and the purchasing of the URL. Um, we're still waiting for that, right? Well, this it's money is budget. for this the money. next the budget. Next for July. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So soon. <laughs> um, but we really need all of you to have to take a look at this because once we start designing this and creating this, um, we want to make sure we've gotten everybody's opinion on everything and that we haven't forgotten anything. Um, it's a pretty long list, but we tried to make it um, well, what we thought was logical and how end users are going to look at it. Um, and we hope at some point to be doing a presentation to the task force regarding the website. Any questions? I have a question about the director of communication. I is that a new position? Somebody um, yes. yeah. and, and and is that on her um, scope or her position to? Uh, what's her involvement of doing the website? I guess that's my question because this is new since the last time. It's a work in Lisa. progress. Oh, okay. It's a work in progress. She just started uh, January first. I, I will say it's it's Stephanie Reith who was with the uh, Sunsbury Patch, so it's, she's very familiar with websites and processes. She's an excellent communicator, so she's an excellent writer, and she can work with Rick on the technical aspects. But her idea, the idea of having this position, uh, you know, the Board of Ed has a webmaster that sort of helps with the design. They don't monitor the site when it's up, but they will help you establish it and help create it and help with the. Uh, communicate and make sure that if you link it to one area of 
the website. It'll, it won't create a separate page that takes you off, but that you can get back. So there are all these technical things that, mm -hmm. uh, so she can assist with that. Absolutely. And uh, I spoke with Mary, and Mary said that Stephanie is ready, you know, as soon as you guys are ready. Okay, so and it's I worth think meeting with her to see what we can do with the current website before you just, I mean, you may decide, and you've looked into this already, and the decision may already be that you want to do a new link. But like Tourism did, they used our existing stuff. Library did, they used our existing tools. So there are options you can do while you're waiting. You can get a few things up really quickly if you feel that's a priority as you're building the website. The one thing I will say, the task force, um, the technology task force made a strong recommendation when the town did its website that what you want to do is a, a few focus groups with people who you think are going to use it before you create it just to make sure you know what the public wants. We, we did not do that at the town level. That was um, a mistake. And so going forward, you know, it's great to learn from your mistakes. So I would just recommend you do an open forum to businesses or builders or residents that you think might want to use and say, what do you want to see on the website? Well, that's one of the reasons we want to present to the task force. I would do it to the public too, not just to a for not just to those who are um, appointed, because that that was one of the recommendations of the technology task force. You can certainly do both, but you don't have to follow that advice. But that was a recommendation of the technology task force to do. What was what was the best format to engage the public? Well. I think you could do it anyways. What they did is they actually brought people, since we had already had the website, we brought in users, we had seniors, young people. We got a group of people and we said, go ahead and use it. Do these tasks. What did you find difficult? What did you find easy? What did you, um, what would you like to see added? What, what do you think is extraneous? So it, it could be anything like that. I mean, you, Main Street would be a great resource. To you, Chamber would be a great resource. I mean, you don't have to do any of that, but well, since it's hard to have people do it until we have a prototype, a prototype up and running because you can't look at anything. Well, like for one thing, I, when Mark showed me that, I thought it was a great list, but you guys didn't have signs. Like, how do you get a sign permit? And that's the number one question I get asked when I'm around town. You know, what's the sign process? So there may be things, just general things that you might want to include that. I don't know. It's I the, think our, our next that. move would be to sit down with uh, Stephanie and look at this list and then start to say, well, how do we then begin to proceed to start to build this? Because before this ever goes live, a lot of people will be able to kick it and play with it right. and ask for things to be added or deleted. Uh, yeah, you could do said, beta testing. And, right. right. This, this came from looking at several other EDC websites around the country right. in terms of what they looked like, how they felt. Um, content and, and the like so how uh, easy they were to use right so um, this is sort of just a outline and so we will then set up a meeting with Stephanie and then start from there and we will report back at each of our meetings over the next month or two or three as it goes so that uh, everybody's above and we're not saying that this is a final yeah let's say this is but there's a lot of information on this list I'm sure I have forgotten something <laughs> that we need to include, and that's why I'm asking for input from right. Right, because we've got such a wealth of information that's out there. It's just how it's organized. We've got a, we don't want to put information in here how to get a dog permit, okay? Right. Because that's not important to economic development. I don't think. Um, but <laughs> we want to make sure we've got how do I get a sign permit? Right. Okay. So we need to all look at this and. Right. and have you run it through uh, the various staff departments, uh, building, um, hirams, to see what uh, items they have that they see continually that might fit into economic development? I, some of them are already in here, but I don't know if they've looked at it yet, because that might be a good resource. Um, just to the to the testing and vetting process, I mean, the, that was one of the main reasons the task force was brought together, because um, it's made up of the end users, as I said. So you have land use planners and land use attorneys and, and the whole like of those folks. And so um, there will be slightly different approaches to the use of it based on what people are going there for, but obviously the premise being economic development. Um, that those folks, and, and Chris had men mentioned this as well, we definitely want them to look at that. We And when I do my presentation, I'll uh, explain a little bit more about where we're at right now. But um, 
that's the express purpose for that group to be together because they are made up of the end users on that. And while we do have an obligation on the town side to make sure the general public can use that, um, your target market is um, <coughs> folks that uh, you know that, that have those professions. Um, but I agree, you know, uh, Henry Mega, those folks should should uh, be able to give some input. They're the ones that now get maybe the phone calls because they can't, you know, get queries via email or, or the website as to what's maybe not accessible, um, that they would be a good, a good resource. Okay. But we will keep everybody posted. Our next meeting, hopefully we'll have more information as to what actually we can do internally in the town. And obviously there is money that is in the ne next budget. I think it's $8,000 to not only look at this website, but also look at tourism's as well as to look at uh, uh, soon as Main Street's website too, and make sure those are maintained. <laughs> Mark, clarification on that. You, um, we actually uh, put a thousand dollars towards that. We took the seven difference, put it towards the communications person. So to assist in, and I think if if as you get to that stage, once you've gotten past the the development and the testing. Um, or as you go through that, I should say, the next step is, is um, you know, the ongoing maintenance and different things like that and, and discussing how that will work and part of that, those monies was, and the idea of um, sort of better defining the role of the director of communications is to, to know that some of that money can be used. Can we, at this stage, let's assume you get the right uh, plan. Mm -hmm. How do we get it actually on a site and people able to view it. Well, we, do we have to wait. Is it within this budget? Can we do that now? Well, you can start or? putting it together, but no, we the can't. funding. No, well, you can start thinking about. It. You can get the content. That's the, well, well, that's, that's what, what this is. Right. That's what I'm asking. But we can't get anything up and running. Until well, you can make. There are two things you could do. I mean, it's only I think six weeks until you get the funding. But if you want, and Hyrule can give you um, the form, you can always submit a form to the Board of Selectmen to say, can you look for money somewhere in a department that has extra money? And sometimes that happens. <laughs> and they can give it to you in advance, and then you don't get it in January. But well, I mean, there is really a communications person now, right? Yes. It, it, can they work? And they're, yes. the, they're the person that will ultimately yes. work on this. Yes. yes. Can they work on it yes. now? Or are they busy with no. other? No. No. The they have the okay. and you can and you know what what Chris said and what um, I can't remember who else said it, but you can start working with the department heads now. See what are their price. I mean, you can get all the stuff you need so that you're ready to go. Our goal is to get everything the list fine tuned, like you know, embedded for everybody. Right. So when we. Because we were requested the funds for the URL and the virtual town hall design piece of it, okay? Six months ago? I don't even remember when it was. And we haven't had it yet. But so we don't have any money in our budget right now to do no, that? Not no. until for this, July. For the, July we've March. used all whatever money we've had. Yes. But we couldn't go to them and ask for how much is that going to We cost? have asked. But well, no, you have well, to not through this. We have, yeah. we have to apply this yeah. specific. And we right. could, you know, it's so why can't we do that now? You can do that. Yeah, you could, you I'm, could, I'm sure that it's not. We're not talking a large expense here to to get what you just asked up yeah. and running. But and my point is, I think it's going to be easier for even staff to to kind of look at this when you have something in a prototype up and say, here's what we have. Take a look, and does it have the permits you want? Does, is it easy? I think, as opposed to just looking at the list, that might be. Uh, an I will just way say it go. does take time because we can't. We are a, um, a line item budget, so we can't make changes. You can't go to Mary. Can I have a thousand dollars? It has to come to the board of selectmen, and then there has to be a transfer. I don't even know if it has to go through the board okay, of finance. I, I, will, I will talk yeah. with Hiram to see if we can find those monies for this very simple stuff. And in the meantime, we'll set up meetings with uh, Stephanie and see what we can do with this in-house and report back to you next month. Yeah. All right, and then once again, in the uh, effort of time here, moving on to item number six, uh, graphical information system, GIS, cost and benefits to the town. Why should we or should we not do more or less of that? I, you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent. <laughs> Uh, so I'll just start with that. I'm a big proponent of that. I, when I go to other websites, what you can do, what you can find using GIS is so crucial. I'm sure Hiram uh, would have a lot of questions answered without having to take the phone call if people could go on and, and do that. So. Yes. 
Good morning. Good morning. I'll tell you a funny story to start off. Actually, the selectmen already heard it. He asked about whether dog licenses were important for economic development. I mean, this is dead serious. One of our first GIS requests was to match up dog licenses with people that own golden retrievers and houses over half a million bucks for a car dealership who apparently was trying to, some statistics indicated that you know, W owners have golden retrievers and they wanted to target their marketing. So you never know what's going to be requested out of these systems. However, and, that, and you could do that too. That's you know, could. That's amazing. And I will tell you the secrets about doing that though. And um, I'll just run through really quickly where we've been. Um, Simsbury is planning and engineering departments have worked in partnership with the region for a long, long time. We were always a strong CAD uh, town, computer rated design for years, going all the way back to 1984. We had a very robust mapping system. We share that with developers uh, for our uh, crucial layers of land use. A parcel database which links in with the assessor as well as utilities. So we've had that capability for a long time. Um, AutoCAD, however, was not um, a web-based type program. and it, It's fairly complex. You need the software in order to run it. So we were primarily dealing with um, developers and builders, professional staffs of architects and engineers. Um, we've been doing that since 1984. Um, one of the interesting things about that system, though, it does require pretty large staff to keep this stuff up to date because it essentially is a mapping design program. All the maps that you see on the board here are GIS-based. You could do those in AutoCAD, but you'd really have to draw every single thing. Um, believe it or not, we developed a GIS implementation plan all the way back in 2002. And it was a five-phase program, and over those years, uh, we've completed just about everything in phase one. Um, we were slowed down a lot over the years because there were varying uh, interests in what would go into the system. Um, and quite honestly, a lot of the uh, caution that was used in developing the programs was due to reduced staffing in other departments because GIS is really all about the data. It's all about geodata and a lot of the departments do not have the staff to feed the system. Um, what geodata means is that this system will automatically depict um, where all those golden retrievers live and those half million dollar houses if in fact all those dog licenses have an address that's correct, if all the assessor records are correct. It's matching up physical locations with addresses. Um, where we are right now is Simsbury, uh, if I remember, maybe no better than I am, but I believe was one of the first towns to develop its last plan of development all on mapping that was GIS based. And we made a lot of effort uh, in developing uh, the data sets and the maps, and those of course are all available actually up on the website right now um, as part of the plan of development. Internally, we are intranet hosted. Um, all the, most of the departments here can get at um, the information we have. Um, it is hosted on an outside site. Um, right now, the features uh, that we have um, are all our land base, which is that underlying assessor piece, which is very critical. It's got all the addresses, all the parcel numbers, as well as the attributes. If you go in and grab one of those parcels, it'll tell you who owns it, the size, the zone, uh, just about everything you want to know. <coughs> we were very fortunate that we partnered with the region. Um, I would say this region probably has some of the best aerial uh, photography around. For those of you that have done that, they are known as orthocorrected. So you've taken the computer's taken the distortion out when the plane flies. Um, this is an existing area. Obviously, that type of information is very valuable for a developer if he wants to see what's out there. Um, we do have layers on wetlands and floodplains. Presently, those are in AutoCAD. We're just bringing them into the GIS system. Um, a lot of other background stuff that's important. This actually depicts all of our drainage system. That's obviously an important to a developer if he's coming in and wants to hook into the system. It also has a lot of environmental benefits if you have a spill. You very quickly know where that's going to go. You know where to put your uh, booms and so forth in place to, to prevent uh, pollution from moving. 
um, where we're, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it, these systems are all about the data. That's where about 80% of the funds are spent. Uh, we do have the framework in place, which is our database, a lot of our utility systems, our land use. That particular map over on the end there is an extraction of just the open space features. But you can go in and get, uh, you could depict all the vacant land that was in an I zone. And in fact, there's an attachment on your agenda there that shows the uh, end product uh, from, from a search of that nature. Um, where, we, where we're looking to go in the future, uh, right now we are fortunate that funds have been put in place. Our budget passed last night, right? So you do have funding for the <laughs> IT department. Um, and it includes uh, funding for hardware, software, and to move towards an internet uh, application for the GIS. Um, the other thing we'll be looking at is automatic updates. You have to be a little careful about some of those things. Though Simsbury is not a big town or a big area uh, in terms of places where you might have heard GIS that can do these automatic updates every you know three in the morning in Hennepin County, uh, Maricopa County. You know it updates at three in the morning. Well, <coughs> I mean Maricopa County is maybe the biggest state of Connecticut, so you have a lot of different applications. So you have to be cautious about selecting automation. The cost could be way in excess of the benefit. Um, in terms of some of the benefits from this system, it obviously does have a quick response. Um, right now we're shared uh, staff services, very small staff surface, uh, services here. We're probably only putting about uh, you know, seven to $10,000 in staff time per year into this system. Um, our GIS uh, host site is about $3,500 a year, and uh, consultant services are around 15000 So if you just add those numbers up, it's way, way less than, this, than having a staff person on board. So we do have good savings uh, in that area. Um, however, if we're going to make this system more robust, we are going to, across the board in all the departments, dedicate some additional time, staff time. Um, as far as your economic development, you can do a lot of multiple searches. You can provide information quickly to people that are looking at properties. Um, you can bring outside data in. That, that's an interesting big plus. Rather than developing your own separate data sets, you can get information from the state, uh, from Yukon on all their different land uh, features, wetlands, open space, uh, floodplains, and bring that into your system, and we have done that. Uh, you can bring the photography in. Uh, so there's some big savings potential there. Um, one of the challenges with some of that, though, interestingly enough, is some of our data, like wetlands, is actually better than the state's because the state's was developed on a big picture. One inch equals 2,000 feet. Ours was developed at 100 feet, so it's a lot more accurate. So in dealing with regional and state initiatives, you have to come up how you're going to blend that and have the best data available. Um, Right now, in terms of going forward, um, as I mentioned before, we're looking at upgrading our hardware, having the ability to uh, support a uh, internet uh, availability. Um, so we'll need some more software and the programming. Um, but we would expect that we'll probably use some host services still. It, it appears to be more economical. Um, what would be very beneficial uh, from your commission is some ideas of the type of data set you'd like to have out there. Uh, and those are things we could work into the system. But we're, right now where we stand, we're in a very <coughs> strong position. We've got a, a good uh, background of information, good mapping. And uh, we are at a very timely point to move forward. Um, when, when our implementation plan was developed back in 2002, the internet applications were a lower priority. So we want to take a look at our priority list, our schedules, and maybe rearrange some of that information. So I think that's kind of a quick thumbnail of, of where we're at. I'd just, uh, I'd just add our technology committee, um, when we formed it, one of the charges was to look at GIS, and they have just now, with the budget passed, in terms of that, I went and presented, speaking with all department heads. 
and getting the needs because it's a great economic tool, but it's also a public safety, it's a roads issue. We have lots of departments that are interested in what we want to do is make sure it's integrated and make sure we can accommodate everyone's request. But it's they are turning to that right now. So we're excited about that. I have two questions. Is the goal to have GIS up and running with this budget passing by the end of the year where people can start using it interactively and the parcels that you identified as available spaces for development, is that something that we could um, have more specifics on as links to the website, in our website for potential developers looking for opportunities here in town of parcels that are you know, available? Vacant. Are vacant yeah, properties. Yeah, yeah. I would say to have that up on an internet level by the end of this calendar year is probably a bit of a push. Okay. Um, by the end of next calendar year would seem to be pretty reasonable. Yeah, we didn't have the staff to even look at GIS, so we did, or some of the basic infrastructure, so that was the task force first thing. You know, it's sort of like when you rebuild, sometimes you got to upgrade the electrical before you get to, to the fun stuff. So that was the focus of the task force, make sure we had staffing so that we can move to the next phase of GIS. But GIS is the next priority of the task force, and they've begun that analysis. And, and they will be coming to you for suggestions as well. Is that uh, part of the staffing, this communication person? No, that yeah, that's through Rick and Pam Lacko and uh, her group. Rick Rosano, Tom Cook works at, um, as Rich alluded to, there is a regional component to it. CROG is working on regional GIS, but as Rich pointed out, sometimes that's not as specific as local, but how do you integrate the two? So there are a lot of moving parts to that, and you want to make sure that we're doing it in conjunction so that we don't get ahead of it and miss out on some regional opportunities, especially with the Nutmeg Network coming down the line. So we're looking at all the parts together and how we integrate it with the understanding that it is helpful to economic development, so we are moving that way. And it's also important, as like with the spill, as Rich pointed out, um, it's also emergency management there's needs there, there's planning, there's roads, there's lease. So there's lots of exciting opportunities there. And we're trying to sort of get a handle on it. Because everybody's sort of been like, I want it for this, I want it for this. And Nancy, when we were at our, two years ago, the GIS, we saw how important that was. But as we the technology task force began, they didn't even have the staff to look at it. They didn't have the infrastructure. So now they're in a place where they can evaluate it and work with you know, support it, and we are on the road. We've taken the first step, but as Rich said, it never goes as fast as you want it to. Do we also yeah. integrate with other towns? I mean, like our neighbors? I, I, I texted or emailed Lisa oh. right after, because I, well, not just now, no, after I, <laughs> I had gone to the task force meeting, um, because I saw GIS on the agenda, and um, again, the Economic Development Task Force and user folks, you know, we want them to be as up to date as you guys are on this right. um, for them to give input. But um, Rick Pizzano made a great presentation on some of the options. He talked about CROG, um, but did point out that their mapping information is dated back to 2003. And although they have an initiative underway, he did say that it was pretty disjointed. And um, they need to talk about the Nutmeg Network and also this New England Geo, um, where the town is putting some mapping um, you know, into place uh, through that, but it, um, one of the questions from the task force was that's downloading or, you know, outputting information and security issues and do we have a policy around that? So the task force, technology task force right. is doing <laughs> a great job with this next step. And um, he also went over South Windsor site and they do have auto update. They, there's a lot of stuff in place. They have a staff of um, three folks, two, two folks that are primarily dedicated <coughs> to this, um, but they've put all the basis in place and there's a possibility of, you know, if they were to, to license off some of the work they've done, that we could do that in conjunction with Nutmeg. So there's a lot, a lot of good information out there, which um, I think can, can really come to fruition sooner rather than later. If you put it in the grand scheme of things of 2002, to 2014. <laughs> so. It takes long, and there's a lot of moving parts, but they are, and I'd like to thank Rich and Hiram and the rest of the town for their initiative on this, and everybody is working towards it at this point. Everybody's on the same page, and we do agree with you that it's yep. an important priority. Excellent. I just wanted to 
take the quick opportunity, if you don't mind, to introduce Jeff Shea. Uh, and Jeff Shea is uh, now a town engineer and has taken my place and has a world of experience in these things, and uh, we'd be very pleased to work with him. Thank you very much. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Okay, uh, we're short on time again. So, Nancy, do you want to give us a give us your your quick? Um, we've got a really dynamic group uh, for the Economic Development Task Force, and um, Lou, Carolyn, um, if you guys, you know, you may have some some thoughts or comments on this as well. And, and I also want to thank Hiram and Sarah because their assistance in. Um, pulling together information for the folks, keeping us on task, um, herding the cats, as they say, because um, the group is very excited about um, what we're undertaking. So um, two meetings back, we went through a lot of information um, from the marketing study. And what we really talked about were, um, you know, what are we selling? The knowledge corridor, our workforce. There were just about seven items, quality of life, that, that we discussed. And what we really looked at was what's our lead asset? What's our, what are things we can leverage? So um, the group came to consensus that it was really built around the quality of life, that if you looked through those items and you discussed knowledge corridor, you know you're one of 80 communities that are on that corridor. So how does that distinguish you and make you unique? Um, and so all of this analysis and, analysis and discussion was around where we take our marketing and how we build our message. And um, so we went from that into um, who we're trying to attract, and we discussed um, from the marketing study, there was uh, three target um, industries, um, advanced manufacturing and technology, uh, retail and specialty, and tourism and recreation. That is me, and I'm so sorry, my phone's going off. Um, so to that, we added housing and mixed use. And that was what led to our presentation um, at our last meeting from um, Yvonne Klein, the commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Housing, and then also David Fink, from uh, policy director from a uh, Partnership for a Strong Community. And um, what we really talked about um, in that meeting and some of the information they shared was around market rate housing. And I say that that way, and I want you guys to say that that way because we it is not affordable housing. And so part of our charge when you talk about marketing is to create a message that is correct um, and that is understandable to um, the task force, to the community at large, so that they um, can see the benefit, the economic development benefit behind a concentration on mixed use and housing. That doesn't mean we won't also be concentrating on those other three target industries, but um, putting feet on the street, um, doing that while also creating some mixed use, um, targeting the areas already uh, discussed um, through the charrette process, the center of town, all of those things that kind of speak to taking advantage of our quality of life while doing all that stuff. So it's been exciting. Um, uh, our wrap up to last meeting, we, um, and we've been discussing it um, for the past couple of meetings, is um, if you remember from the marketing study, there's a sort of a wedge of pies in a circle and it was leading us from analyzing everything to getting to our core idea and then moving on to strategy and tactics. So um, the core idea that was proposed from the marketing study, um, and you guys can go back to that, and I should know verbatim and I don't, but it was around the idea of innovation and nature. Um, and what the group discussed is that's important, <laughs> but when we went through really discussing and digging into some of the what we're selling um, and who we're selling to, uh, we came up with, and I'll, I'll read this to you, and this is information I'll, I'll pass along to you guys because I would like um, your input as well. Um, Simsbury is a high-value community. Quality of life is a chief attraction for people looking to move to Simsbury and a key reason current citizens stay, as well as our strongest asset for retaining and attracting business. So um, from that, um, we will break out uh, into groups, and the group that's charged with marketing is really going to take that message and do some, a little bit more wordsmithing to it, come up with a tagline, and that will take them in the direction of marketing. So um, the, the other thing, and I'll share this with you guys as well, um, so if you again go back to that image of the core idea and then go to the, to the right of it, when we get on to strategy, um, what we want to do to the task force is actually put them to work. 
So um, what we gave them at our last meeting, uh, we have three goals that we've sort of broken out, and that is looking at programs, looking at process, and looking at marketing. And, and we gave them action items under each of those so they could get a better understanding of what that meant. And we've asked them to give us their first and second choice of where they'd like to participate. So really how they'll take their skill sets, professional skill sets, and put those to work, whether it be um, through marketing, media buying, land planning, land, um, land use attorney, all those, those um, skill sets. Um, and so we don't want to necessarily concentrate folks in just one thing because we realize that um, again, it's that whole idea of end user. They'll be creating it. Um, some will be using it, and you know. So we need, want a nice cross section of folks. So um, everything you guys have spoken to today are the things that, as I said, these folks will be looking at because they are the end users to it. So under programs, um, you know, we'll be looking at. Um, benchmarking what other communities offer and similar communities and, and how that relates to the industry targets that we have that we're looking at. Um, we'll be looking at telecommunications and technology and how GIS and websites and things play into um, providing that information. Um, under process, we'll be looking at uh, business retention. Uh, we had a little bit of discussion of what that actually meant, and so we want to make sure that the group understands that and that we're setting expectations for the business community as to what that means. Um, and of course, under marketing is um, developing, of course, a, a PR and marketing campaign, but then also bettering the communications in the business community. So um, it's a lot, and it's hey, we got seven minutes left. <laughs> so I'm happy to answer any questions, but I certainly want to pass on to you guys where we are right now, those documents, and then we did have Hiram some great handouts from um, Yvonne and. Um, they, just to say what they, disposable income was one of the things they talked about regarding housing, supporting businesses, um, the workforce that you can support. They talked a lot about people that already live in our community but can't necessarily afford, afford to um, live here, work but can't afford to live here. Um, and then lowering the risk of foreclosure. So all good things that um, will help us, you know, make a stronger um, community for our residents and a stronger community for our businesses. Okay. Nancy, I know we're pressed for time. You, you stated earlier, was it rate-based housing that we... Market you, rate. Market rate. And so okay. to give you a sense of that, they talked about the median income in Simsbury and 80% of that being about $90,000. And I happen to use the example of my office and folks that are there. And, um, you know, and then you take 50% of that, you're on $50,000. And that translates to about a $1,500 rent to a $2,300 rent a month. And so it's... it's yeah. Uh, pretty good amount of money, but the idea is, um, you know, the clusters of housing we have here and what's missing, and we actually have, and Chris, you probably can speak to this like there's no tomorrow, um, very below the, the average for the state of Connecticut, we have, I think it was 23%, Hiram, Sarah, do you remember, of zero to two bedroom <coughs> options. So when you churn people through the community, you don't have the ability to do that if you don't have that point for people to start from and go back to. Is that oh. the linchpin of your pa of your plan? I know what, what, what you're saying, the quality of life. It seems to me that's preaching to the choir. We all know we're all of a certain age, some of us older. But um, <laughs> what you want, I, I think, is the younger people building families, spending more in the community. And the national trends are people want to go to live in urban areas. They're moving away. I mean, first time home buyers are like 32% of the market, usually about 40%. I mean, the going to affordable or rate market based. Market rate. Market rate, that's the word. Uh, how, that seems to be the linchpin in the plan. Um, and that's a good one. For it it is, and w w we were very mindful of this lead and leverage because it isn't to forget that in doing that, you're creating opportunities for, for advanced technology and manufacturing, and you're creating opportunities for um, retail and services. Um, so, so there's, um, and, and we also talked about the capacity of our schools, and, and, and even David Fink mentioned that, you know, we have declining enrollment, and, yeah. and so we're talking about, and mindful of, the marginal cost of the town to um, allow for us to be, remain vibrant by creating housing stock, um, that fills the voids that we that we currently have, and um, it, it's the millennials, but it is also the folks that are looking to downsize too, because we don't want to lose 
the volunteer aspect of those uh, that participation in our community, the the disposable income of the people, um, and some of the other information <coughs> they shared was. Um, a 50% market rate has a disposable income of $12,800. 80% is $14,000 some odd dollars. 100% plus is $19,000. So there's not a lot of disparity between those numbers. They don't double when you go from the 50 to the, you know, so it's just understanding all of that. It's dispelling some of the concerns around um, creating housing that somebody making $90,000 a year can afford or somebody making $50,000 a year can afford. Yeah, but Nancy, one thing that goes hand in hand with this is driving down the mill rate. Because people, when they're looking for homes, Avon and Farmington are like 13 or more points lower than Simsbury. Okay. And there are many things that this town can do, consolidate, regionalize certain services, uh, that would <coughs> drive that mill rate down. And well, we've, we have not done that. And I have advanced for the past five or six years a laundry list of things that should be considered that can be done to drive costs down. Yeah. Because as long as this mill, I'm, I'm convinced if you did a forecast, this mill rate's going to go over 50 but five years out. So I'm we talked a lot about our challenges and, and um, the couple of things that, that I said that, you know, and I, and I talk about messaging um, when I talk about market rate, but also uh, the phrase of Sims Boring and how far we are from the highway and that we our, our mill rate is what it is. I mean, I have to say, you know, for, and, and Rich said yes, that the budget did pass. Um, our mill rate went down for the first time. It was a small amount, but it was significant because it's never done that before. And it was because of shared um, uh, health care um, through the Board of Ed and the town. So consolidating that under one carrier. There are some steps to be made. I know you have tons of ideas in that regard. That's not necessarily the charge of the task force. But you've got to ask yourself what, what the insurance, for instance. That should have been done 10 years ago. And That's what corporations do. And this town, I'm telling you, does not want to change and does not want to listen to things that can be done. I have advanced a number of items. Not one of them has been done. Yeah. Not one. So, again, it's not to say and that that's all... That's my you... area of expertise, and I've done it repeatedly with businesses, big corporations, small businesses, and towns in the state that I come from. Yeah. Okay? And you're, as I said, your points are all good ones, and to the extent in which I think we had a very good budget cycle right now, and our new finance director is outstanding. It, it, the, the, a lot of folks didn't go to the small meeting in the uh, Henry James Auditorium after the referendum. Um, they went very quickly from setting the mill rate based on having that, that been lowered out of the budget process to discussing some real long-range planning. And um, Peter Askham's doing an outstanding job in that regard. Um, but to really focus back on this, we do know what challenges we have in front of us, but the idea is to expend the energy with that in mind, looking towards the things that we know we can leverage, um, things we need to we know we need to lead with um, in terms of who we want to market to and what we're going to market. So, um, the task force, as I said, is getting ready to break out into groups. And um, you mentioned the website. I would like to pass that list on to the group and get them thinking already about yeah, giving some take, feedback. Take a copy or two. Uh, if if you can send it to me, yeah, and then I'll forward that along to the group. And again, I'll forward to you folks what we that group has been looking at, so we can get your reaction. One of their first charges is to look at these lists that we've broken out and just sort of, make, you know, as I said, I'll send this to you and you can see, but, um, and I said, I numbered it, but I should have probably put bullet points. This is not in necessarily any order. It's not complete. <laughs> you guys are talking about your web list, but it is to get them thinking. Um, and I should add, I made another note for you guys when you were talking about doing some planning, um, not to forget about the 1995 um, economic development study, Hiram, that came out because um, it is important. I mean, I think our budget spoke to a concentration on economic development through um, the fiber optics and, and technology um, infrastructure that was passed, um, <coughs> through the funding of economic development task force and the marketing study. So a lot of things and initiatives, the funding of the website. Um, but I do think we need to have an overall mission um, that, that comes um, from the Board of Selectmen and, and resonates through the boards and commissions of this town and really is um, sort of 
the, I always use that term ambassadors. We need to be able to be on board with that. We're going to bring this core idea back to you guys. We want you to endorse it. We want the Board of Selectmen to endorse it. We want to make t-shirts that talk about it because we want everybody to know that we as a community are taking this extremely, um, you know, this charge um, very importantly. And um, we, one thing that came out from David Klein and Yvonne is a lot of communities are looking at what we're looking at, not in the way we are. And so we have a distinct advantage and what I think we need to do is, is, is champion that and just you know, take it to the next level and, and a lot of this work is gonna allow us to do that. Can I just make a quick comment about um, the mill rate and well, that from a professional standpoint? And this speaks to the piece that Sarah has been working on about Simsbury to educate real estate agents. When, and I've had this experience very recently with five different sets of people, when you talk about the quality of life here in Simsbury versus our surrounding communities and other towns such as Glastonbury, they choose here. Um, because when you educate them about what we have to offer and the quality that we have here in Simsbury, it sells them every time. It's taking the time to educate them about why they should live here and the differences between our communities that makes the difference for people to choose to purchase a home here or maybe start a business here. Um, and the piece that Sarah's been working on with the realtors um, is an important step to educating people about what we're about. Right, and I think that's the point <clears throat> as I talk about the ambassadors and the championing of, championing of this. It's important that, um, and, and I know through that process, you talked about some of the realtors didn't have the knowledge. Um, even be having been in the industry that they've been in, been in this community for as long as they have, didn't have that knowledge. So that's where it goes back to the whole communication idea that when Main Street did their branding program eight years ago, they said, the first people that we need to educate are our residents because our number one tourism driven thing is is people that come to visit us in our community. So if people come to your home, your family and your friends, and you don't know enough about where to, what to do and where to take them, and, and part of it is you're, enjoy, you're helping them enjoy the experience and, and you're enjoying their visit, but you're sharing with them what our town is all about. And, and that messaging and that experience is, uh, you know, it's important we know that. And, and um, <coughs> so we're excited, as I said, really excited about this. And, um, we keep the group going from five to seven. Um, they'd probably stay longer. We do feed them, so that helps. But, um, but we're excited to have them break out and see where they're going to take a lot of this stuff next. And, and as I said, we'll keep you guys informed. Excellent. Um, we're going to move on. And you'll be back, I know, next, uh, I'll be back. next month. Yeah. So uh, you would like to talk about SCTV? Dominique and myself. Yes. yes. So go ahead and take we'll that. And then quick and concise. Minutes. OK. okay. Good morning. Uh, most of you know me as that SCTV guy who sets up the mics and then disappears <laughs> upstairs behind the curtain, manipulates the controls to record this meeting and get you on the air. I am all that. But also, my name is Wooda McNiven, and I've been an SCTV volunteer for 10 years. For the past couple of years, I've also been on its board of directors. And at the leadership level, one of our top priorities is to get the word out that SCTV is a free service. It is free to the public. It is free to any residents who want to create their own content. It is free to Simsbury businesses, business owners who would love to get up and talk about what they do. But as you know, there is no such thing as free. It costs a lot of money to do what we do. And in part, we depend, uh, our funding is dependent upon contributions from residents, but it's also dependent upon <coughs> business sponsorships. And we're about to embark on a direct mail marketing campaign. We're going to send out close to 800 pieces to businesses in Simsbury. And I'm going to hand that letter out to you before you all leave so you can read it. And we think we offer some pretty good bang for the buck. But businesses will get their slide up on TV. And when you work out the math, uh, over a full year subscription, which costs 500 bucks, it only costs 12 cents every time their information gets put onto the screen. But their information is also put onto our website. Um, Going back to the free, just to give you an example, uh, a physician who recently set up a medical practice in the north side of town came to Simsbury and he got on the air and he talked about health issues that are concerned to everyone. What does that do? By default, it helps promote his business. But not all business owners are going to take that kind of initiative. So I raised my hand and said, hey, you know, maybe 
I need to reach out as part of Simsbury TV leadership and try and get businesses to be spotlighted and I'm going to create a new program. In my professional life, I am a freelance business writer and financial analyst. <clears throat> my clients are investment banking firms that want to sell their clients' businesses or private equity groups that seek to acquire businesses. Uh, so in any event, when I get involved, I get to dig deep into the dirty laundry of those companies and see what makes them tick. So I'm hoping those skill sets will translate to a certain extent over to creating this content of spotlighting Simsbury businesses. But no dirty laundry, we just want to present them in their Sunday best. And there's three objectives. You know, one is to inform the viewer what businesses are out there in Simsbury. B, by default, hoping to help promote those businesses so that they pick up more local-based customers. And C, of course, <laughs> we want the money. We want the uh, uh, business sponsorships. So I, I hope you all put a good word in for us. I'm going to hand you out copies of the letter that will be going out today. And Dominique would like to say a few words. I just wanted to give you some idea of what it, what we are doing, and it goes along with all the communications things that we've been talking about here, that Nancy Hazy was talking about. We took what Peter Fairweather ha uh, said to heart, and over the past year, we have done a tremendous amount of programming. One of the reasons we need more money is we need volunteers do all the programming, they do all the shooting, they do everything, but we need people we need to pay the people in the studio to upload and download all these things on TV and on the website because everything we do is on the website. But I just went through the other day a list of things, what we've done in the last two months. And we produced 65 local programs over the last two months. You can go to SCTV and learn about just about everything that's going on in town. Lou George knows that. He has a program. Um, realtors have a program. We do a show called Simsbury View, which is about all the things that are going on in town. We do another one called The Talk of Simsbury, which is about the issues going on. Hiram's been on that. The marijuana uh, <coughs> had a discussion. So in the last, just the last two months, 65 hours of program, which included 19 public uh, meetings like yours, uh, 10 school items. We'd like to school shows. We'd like to do more. We do now a half hour a headline show, a news show, which I would love to see happen every single day, but we don't have the money for it, where we actually highlight news stories that are going on. You heard about the budget, uh, the tax decrease on our show first. Uh, in any case, we are a vibrant place, and it goes along with everything else that we're talking about here. Uh, economic development. We need the people of Simsbury to know what is in their town, and that's what we're about. So I just wanted to let you know. And the other thing is that there was a great article on us and Inside Simsbury. It came out mid-December, unfortunately, in the middle of the catalog issue, and I think a lot of people threw it out. I would be delighted to send all of you a PDF copy of it so that you can take a look at it. And then also in the front, there's a, we have... Um, uh, flyers about our show. And it, uh, we just wanted you to know that we're here and you're on TV now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a good thing? You. Thank you. Over Thank you. Dominique. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Who's um, program is Dancing with the Lawyers? <laughs> okay. Is that it? No. So with that, um, Hiram, I don't know, did we uh, totally cut you out? Did you, would you like to get to it? You know, about eight or ten projects to talk about, so probably going to take about 20 minutes, so I'm happy to go to the next one. Yeah. Anything yet? I'd you like, like, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear if we meet okay, once a month. Fine, I'd, fine. I'd rather go the 20 minutes. Okay. The Hartford um, property, most people have comments or, or concerns about that. The code for the Hartford property is done. It's been sent to the Hartford. I have a conference call with them actually this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Hopefully they'll give me their final blessing. We'd like to get that back in front of land use commissions. We're hoping for June 16th. So if you want to put that on your calendars to come to that meeting to learn about the code and what it says, it it'll be put on the website as soon as the Hartford um, gives me the uh, approval to do that. The draft code is already up there. And so what's, on, what's going to be on the code, on the uh, the revised code is not significantly different, but there's some word, word uh, smithing that the Hartford wanted done. So that's being done today, and hopefully we'll finish it today. Secondly, most people have 
questions or comments about the Big Y project. This project is still uh, uh, going forward. Uh, we're hopeful that the easement will be signed uh, by the skating center, agreed to by the town and the other parties um, as soon as possible. We hope that the construction will start this spring. They will not be open this year because they need to be open by October of the year that they start construction in. Otherwise, they won't open because that's their busy season, so it'll probably be 2015. Uh, but because of this holdup with the signing of the uh, easement document, um, so whoever's responsible for that, we have a, a year's worth of delays. And by the way, that's about $250,000 a year worth of taxes from the big Y that we do not have because that easement's not in place. Um, so the next pro project that was approved just recently was a powder forest PAD project that had uh, three components to it. Powder Forest is, as you go right off of Hot Meadow in this particular case, a commercial component right near the beginning of it, a senior living residential component with about 200,000 square feet, and also a residential component of mixed uh, variety of types of housing, about another about 250 units of housing as well. That was approved by the Zoning Commission. Whether that'll go forward immediately or not, or, or be over time, I think gradually over time is what the plan is, is so it, it doesn't all hit the market at the same time. That'll go forward, uh, as I said, over time. Carson Way, by the way, another part of that in Potter Forest is moving forward fairly rapidly. And so that's, um, they're, they're getting, those are single family units, 74 single family units. Those will be ready to come into the market in the next, probably within the next nine to 12 months. A couple of quick things is we'll be seeing um, very shortly a proposal for the development of that vacant property in the corner of Hoffman, property Bushy Hill Road in 44. That's been vacant for that little tiny piece of property. It used to be a gas station for Next years. Next to oh, McDonald's. Yeah. Next to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. We'll be seeing that in the near future. Um, so that's a very tricky piece of property to develop, very hard to get in, very hard to get out. It has required an incredible amount of negotiation between the various landowners and access ways. The DOT will be involved. There's also other issues with regard to setbacks and things. The Zoning Board of Appeals will be involved. Very complex for a small piece of property. But that should be hopefully within the next year another income revenue producing property for the town environmentally that is <clears throat> cleaned up the cleanup it, it, is is proceeding along whether it's completely clean or not is up to the previous owner and so this development will not be residential will not be connected to any groundwater systems and so the development can likely take place before that's actually okay. finalized that's right next to mcdonald's harm yes, right yes. that little that little track yeah. yes what kind of what are they planning to <coughs> a bank a bank. Mm. Correct. Gee, we don't have any of those. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Put all your money That's in. That's exciting, isn't it? Huh? Well, it, it could be. It could be. Um, it could be interesting. You know what I'm really pressing them for. Is a Bitcoin for. bank? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That you can see that it's already there. Actually, it's virtual. You can see it's already still there. Right now. Bitcoin. <laughs> the, um, what I'm really pressing them for is a really out. It's not a dispensary. What What I'm pressing them for is an outstanding piece of architecture in that corner. What I'd really like to see is something really outstanding. I don't want to see you know a box where they bring it in and put it on a foundation. So that'll be a struggle, and it's not easy. But um, we're working with them on that. Another thing we're going to see, zoning commission will see a informal presentation for development on the Northeast Utilities property uh, at their, I think probably May 19th meeting, they're gonna be talking about that. There's no formal application for that yet. Um, that involves some commercial aspects, some residential aspects, and the Northeast Utilities building will be staying there for the time being. So that'll be talked about, I think, on the May 19th project meeting. There's also, as some of you may have seen, signs sprouting up along Hop Meadow with regard to the pool barn property. And there, uh, th that application has gone through the Conservation Commission. There is a um, long history with that property as well. The property has a, a variety of uh, variances that went with it years ago. So, for example, if somebody wanted to repair cars there or sell cars there, they could do that right now. They could also do other retail activities there. From the pool barn activity uh, that was there from years ago, they could do that right now. The only thing that is going to be proposed, um, which is not currently allowed, is dispensing gasoline from that site. And so that's what the concerns are now. We went through conservation, several meetings, lots of discussion about triple protection of how the uh, gasoline uh, would be prevented from getting into the groundwater in that particular area. And that was uh, approved by the Conservation Commission after lots of discussion. So hasn't have a zoning application yet. We expect that probably in the next month or two. How big a parcel is that? Well, it's probably an acre, something like that. You say 10? 
one, eight, one acre. Oh, one acre. Oh. Yeah. Part of this proposal, as I understand it, and I haven't seen the plan yet, involves the uh, significant rehabilitation of the pool barn building. So that's a really outstanding building if you've been inside of it. So. <coughs> so we're anxious to do that. One thing I just want to mention to you is I'm really gratified to see that the whole phase one of the marketing study is getting so much play. That was a, a significant amount of work that was done for a very low amount of money and it has a lot of good information in it that people are using to serve the springboard into what we're doing for phase two. So we're very happy to see that. And then lastly, I'd just like to say that some of the issues and problems that you see, we have been working for two years with DOT to get a sign for the urgent care center, walk-in center in the north end, two years for a sign. That's, you know, says walk-in center, eight to eight. Um, can't get it. So, you know, in terms of economic development and things that you might want to be interested in, people talk about signs. It's very difficult to do, to do that when you're working with some aspects of the state that are not interested in. in why, why is the DOT involved in that? Is it, it going to be right within? Away. The right away is pretty wide there. Well, it's the right away. That it, it, you can put up <laughs> signs on Route 10 without going to DOT, but in this, it's in there right away. They want to put it in there right away. Yeah, I mean okay. the right away is very wide. Lou. For example, the library, in front of the library, right away is almost 100 feet wide. I mean that sign that the library that took a long time to get approved for the library. It did as well. And I mean the, the DOT wanted special uh, signs that break away in case somebody ran into it. I mean it was incredible. You say the right away I mean from the center of the road, 50 feet on either side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on. Don't we have some connection or liaison? I know uh, there have been people from DECD um, that have come, and they're kind of um, liaisons to help the town with different we aspects even, of, of uh, <coughs> state agencies. We even had the commissioner of DOT at that site, and he thought that was fine. It was going to work out just fine. He went back to his office, and his staff informed him that it was not possible to do. Um, there are a series of... Um, policies that the state has with regard to signs on interstate highways that they apply to Route 10. So, you know, it's not it's not like a, a flashing sign or a big green sign that says, you know, roadway in 10 <laughs> miles. It just says urgent care, you know, 8 to 8 with a little arrow. Um, so we're working hard on that. I'm the, just, they've, closed, go ahead. Sir, they've closed on the land up there on Giorgio's to put up the apartment. <coughs> Correct. Yes. So we should see something happen there relatively soon, right? Yes. They were. They wanted to start Monday, but they had a, a question. They, they're working with the state again on a stormwater permit, and as soon as the stormwater permit is clarified, then they can begin. So they'll start excavation probably within the next two weeks. That's 180 or 100? 168. 168 apartments? Market rate, yep. Market rate. <laughs> EB affordable housing. How, how many levels? Three? Three. Two? Three. So the development at West Street, as you know, is moving along forward very well. It's about 87 percent <coughs> full of apartments right now. Some of the townhouses are being looked at, and they have. Are they sold any of the townhouses? Do you know? I don't know. Yes, they have. Have they? Do you know how many? Not off the top of my head, but there are a few that are under contract. No, it's it's moving forward. I, I assume if they were moving forward faster, that the rest of the buildings would be up. But they're they're moving forward. I think in a, at a reasonable pace anyway, right now. So that's just kind of an overview of what's going on. There are a ton of other things we're still working on. The WETOG study, we're still working on. Um, the Route 10 study, there's some discussion about uh, some money to do some work at Nod Road um, with regard to straightening out that intersection and working on that as well. So it, Would that include the... Uh, Rotary? The, the, where that road, yeah. I'm not sure, Lou. I asked that question the other day. That um, is just such a mess. It would be it, such an easy solution. Yeah, that's it's one thing that it involves a couple of things. It involves some private property, which is right. an issue, and involves some floodplain property, which is another issue. Uh, one of the suggestions that I made to Krog, and I'm not sure how well it was received, and I talked to the town engineer about, it, is that I'd like to see that project switched to creating the Weetok Village Green. Remember in the Route 10 study that w Village Green that was created? That was a really cool project. That would create additional space for the commuter parking lot, <coughs> create additional commercial space create a real sense of being for where, where Weetog is located in, in that village. And somebody even talked about moving that, that statue, that Civil War monument, over to the village green. If, if, if that green where would that green go? Because I don't recall. It, it kind of, it's, a, it's a little minor realignment of 10, and it would be actually kind of in a wide spot right there. We just create a wide spot in the road. Where the commuter lot is? Yes. Oh, okay. <coughs> commuter lot would be slightly relocated. It would involve some private property, but we've talked to the private property owner before. 
And as long as they come out of it whole or better in terms of uh, creating additional commercial space, they're fine with it. So I think that would be a, a really cool project. It's not easy to, to move projects like that around, so it may be a year or two before we do that. But again, working on that now with the OT, it's a complicated process, but we're working hard to try to get that screwed. Can you, can you go back to the easement on the big Y? Mm -hmm. Now, you say that's being held up by the International Skating Center? There was a, there was a document that was uh, signed, signed by the Skating Center a while ago that put some additional responsibilities on the town <coughs> in terms of insurance and so on. Well, the town attorney is working on that now to try to get that straightened out. Yeah, that goes way back, though, right? <coughs> That's right. And so the town owns the land that the skating sun is on, right? Correct. So why is the skating skating sun of the impediment to this? You'd have to ask the town attorney that question, Dave. I can't tell you. The, the skating That'd be in their center, lease. Skating center has a lease. And I think in order to be clear, the, the documents that I've seen said, it's everybody's opinion that they don't need this easement. Uh, however, in order to be clear about it, they wanted the easement signed. So that's that's what it is. We do it, have the final plans for the big Y in our office now. But they won't start construction <coughs> until... Until that's clarified. Until it's clarified, but then they won't start it until they get to a point where they open a year from the fall? That's right. So if they start construction this summer, they probably won't open until next spring, until the spring of 2015. They can't get the, the permits to start they can get until the permits there's tomorrow. a closing, right? Permits could be given tomorrow, Dave. We, we're fine. The town is fine with that. It's a, it's a hold up between the individual private parties. Well, we've been hearing this story for a long, long time, I'll tell you. Yep, I agree. What, uh, what, about, what about Mary as the first selectman meeting with these people and kind of putting a little pressure on them to yeah, move this has. thing along? I believe. I think has. there has been some of that. Has there? Yeah. 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 Uh, how long is the International Skating Center's lease? It has to be renewed at some point in time, right? Periodically. It did. It was just re renewed not too long ago, and I think the next time it's up is either 18 or 19, 2018. Well, there's a lot of... Like I think it's something There's a lot like of that. latent pressure the town can put on on that yeah, in terms I, of the future. Yeah, I don't have any public comments on that, but you no, can... No, I know you don't. I do, though. <laughs> Where's the screen? <laughs> So that's, that's what we're up to. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I'm happy to do whatever I can. What's going on in the parcel um, at the gas station across from um, the old Wagner property? Gas station. Another gas station? Yep. Okay. Pride. Pride. Pride uh, yes. Valero, Valero was, the two, mm -hmm. those two Valero stations went to Pride. Um, new buildings will go up there. Um, 42 by 46 foot building convenience store, gas pumps. Uh, the one on the north section is in an aqua protection zone, and that is also going to get that triple protection, triple wall protection. So in case there's a leak, there are three, at least three different steps that, that uh, they, where they can catch a the leak. The one up by Canes. That's correct. Yep. We'll that see. building is, uh, we struggled hard with the design in that building. Design Review Board looked at it too. You'll see when the building is built that the windows, the main windows for that building are going to face south toward the gas pumps mm -hmm. because we wanted it to face the street. And they said it didn't. It didn't work. The site alignment didn't work. They want people to be able to to see the gas pump from inside the store in case of a, a spill or an emergency or, you know, God forbid, or you know, and some sort of And is the gas robbery. station in front of Big Sky? Are they expanding because they were putting in a large retention wall? They're they are putting in a retention wall. That's it's going to be the same size building, 42 by 46, and that's going to be moved to the back corner of that particular property as well. We talked about screening, landscaping, fencing, lighting, all that stuff. So I think that the buildings will be quite similar in terms of their design. Should be pretty nice upgrade for those pro both mm -hmm. those properties. So we're hopeful about that. Hiram, is there a parcel of land large enough where that's zoned for industrial, where you could develop an industrial park, where you could attract <coughs> maybe you know high end, high tech kind of manufacturing or. To, because I, I mean, from from an economic development standpoint, unless the town is willing to endorse something like that and make that <coughs> kind of a priority, I, I mean, to me, economic development is creating jobs, yep. not just building bricks and mortar. Because after the bricks and mortar go up, there's no jobs. Absolutely, I mean, they, they move on. Here. And I, I think the the thing that would enhance 
and change this balance of 90 percent of the taxes come from the residential is to have an industrial park somewhere that's that you know the right kind of businesses you yeah. know high end yeah. that attracts engineers and people that you would want in the housing you know buying homes in the town yeah. the boot. Yeah. Before I answer, I just want to say that that's a really good question, and I would really like about 20 or 30 minutes at one of your meetings to talk about that that's whole thing. That's fine. We should. But let me give you a couple quick answers. One is, take a look at the Hartford property, for example. 173 acres, acres. Yep. 40 acres, completely flat, road access, perfect, no wetlands, goes back to the river, beautiful mm -hmm. access to trails and so on. That's an incredible piece of developmental property. We're very encouraged by some of the things that we hear, and I don't have any names for you, sure. uh, that the, the, the realtors are talking to some specific people this week. We're very encouraged about some nifty things that might happen there. That zone, that property is currently zoned for, for that type of thing. There's other properties in the north end that are zoned for that type of thing as well. We're very anxious to have that happen. We've spent a lot of time streamlining, streamlining our development process so that if someone comes in, they can come in and if it's in the proper zone, which it would be, we, they can move through the development process very, very quickly, probably within 30 to 60 days if an application one was serious about that. So we're, we're very anxious to have that happen. You have as part of your package today a letter from Jeff Shea about how much uh, industrial land is, is, is vacant. When you read that, be very careful about how you read it. One is vacant land, and I don't know how the question was asked to Jeff because I wasn't really part of that letter, but if somebody said, well, how much land is vacant, how much is available, there are two different things. One is some, some property could have an old building on it that may be ready to be demolished, and that could be ready for development as well. But just looking at the numbers that Jeff put together, I did an analysis of that. The amount of property that's available on, based on Jeff's memo here indicates that we could hold right now 11 to 18 Hartfords in town just on that property that's available. Imagine what that would do to the traffic. I mean, great for the taxes, but imagine what that would do to the traffic on 10. It wouldn't be a two-lane highway anymore. 11 to 18 Hartford properties. So that's a phenomenal amount of development. We have plenty of capacity. You're exactly right. I think getting people to understand the message out there that we're open for business and we're ready to move those things through the process quickly, I think is key to that. You know, in, another thing, thought that I had, uh, because I noticed they were doing it in Florida because there's a big concentration of medical facilities. Yep, absolutely. And we have that here with all these hospitals <coughs> to attract businesses that support medical hospitals, medical research, et cetera, because, you know, again, you're dealing with <laughs> professionals and people that would buy homes in town, and, you know, I was thinking, like, even of the Hartford property that somehow, I, I've never been in, I've been in the building, but not through the whole thing, um, it, you know, that's an area that would be ideal to create some kind of a uh, medical, yep. you know, research kind of absolutely. And the code that we put business. together, interestingly enough, could actually allow that to come forward very, very quickly. The code is designed specifically to allow something like that to happen. So there could be a live, work, play situation created there, and that's exactly how the code is put together. That was one of the two or three options we looked at. I specifically myself have talked to the vice president of Jackson Labs to say, by the way, if you have any spillover office space that you need, right. you know, not in Farmington. Feel free to come here. We could get get it approved very quickly. I've talked to a number of other people as well. I think I may have mentioned at one of the chamber meetings. I've talked to a number of microbreweries, for example, in other parts of town. Very enthusiastic about that. Getting them to understand that they could actually build a 50 or 75,000 square foot building here quickly. They just are having a hard time believing it. So it's a matter of continuing to talk to them, to say, uh, you know, I'm not sure the people of Simsbury would really want you know, a 75,000 square foot manufacturing facility in their town, which is really what they are, even though it's Brewery, liquid. Yes. liquid. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But there are a lot of restaurants and things that go along with that. It could be, could be cooking classes. It could be all kinds of things that, that would go along with that. It could be a TV studio where you have your, you know, the chef of the day or whether it's Guy LaFerry or whatever his <laughs> name is. You know, all kinds of things could happen there. Um, SCTV could plug into that kind. Of, there's all kinds of stuff. So we do have plenty of room available to do that kind of stuff. We need to make sure people know it. 
just a quick mention about traffic on Route 10. Mm -hmm. um, we talk a lot of, about our walkability and um, our crosswalks are very dangerous um, because the signs aren't up a lot of the time. And I've seen on numerous occasions people trying to cross the street and no one stops for them. I think we need to do a better job if we're going to continue to promote this walkability in this town center to make sure that those crosswalks can be used safely <laughs> um, by, you know, whether you're riding your bike or you're walking the kids or whatever, but it's um, gotten increasingly difficult to do that. Mm. We're, um, it's a really a double-edged sword because what happens is, we, uh, the DOT of course, Basically, it's a traffic sewer. They want to just get as much through as possible, as quickly as possible. Our view is that we've slow people down. Number one, it's safer. Number two, they can see what they're going by. And hopefully, if the, the, the businesses and the signs are attractive and so on, maybe they'll go into some of those businesses. People don't want to be slowed down at all. And so when you hear development applications, first thing you hear from people is, well, you know, the traffic in front of my property is now ten times worse than it was, you know, three. So it, it is a double-edged sewer. So we need to make sure that just crossing the street here to get us to get a sandwich at lunchtime is taking your life in your hands. No yeah. question about it. Absolutely right, Chris. Absolutely right. Yeah, but I, I think some of that too. I, I absolutely agree. Uh, but there's got to be more enforcement because I see people flying along here. It's 30 miles an hour. They're doing 50, 60 miles an hour. There's got to be more enforcement because I have the same issue where I live up on 185. People are zipping up that mountain at 60, 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, you could give tickets out all day, and we, we probably need more enforcement. Yeah. I think you're right, Gary. I think, you know, I, and I could mention, I'll, I'll email the chief and tell him that this was a, was a comment from the, from the EDC. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened is as cars become more and more comfortable, people can go faster and faster, and they don't realize it. I used to drive, and I had the pleasure of driving lots of Model A's, and you knew then you were going fast, and so right. people didn't go as fast. Yeah. Now you can sort of sit yeah. there at 60 or 70 or 80, and it doesn't even seem like yeah. you're going fast. But but you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. I, I've tried to cross the street sometimes. People are flying. Yeah, it's thing. tough. One time I was I actually, the, 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 the crosswalk sign was actually there, and I was actually watching the car, so I ran into the crosswalk sign myself. I said, that felt pretty. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe there's a campaign or public uh, awareness that could be on CPTV uh, and in the paper, Simsbury um, newspapers uh, and website that educate the public of what their responsibility is going through the center of town and Iron Horse, <laughs> you know, Boulevard, that uh, I think people just... Um, for the most part are ignorant about you know what their responsibility is and uh, I see a lot of people talking on their cell phones still holding up their cell phones so I think there's a lot of issues going on with uh, they're just zoned out uh, and and it's just going to take uh, hopefully we don't have this happen but you know I could see a big problem happening and somebody get really hurt yeah there was an article in the Times actually I think last weekend about people that joined the run over club yeah. in the city yeah. you know it was very interesting. You're, you're absolutely right, Carolyn. I think that's a, yeah. it's a really good Be idea. Be proactive about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's something that, that we can talk to SCTV about. Get the police to come and talk to, you know, to, on SCTV. Yeah, the the only problem is I think a lot of the traffic is non-Simsbury. I mean, I think this is a crossing area, so you get a lot of people, you know, who, who are coming through the town to get to their yeah. where they live. I mean, there is a certain element of Simsbury traffic, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think there's a lot of you know, uh, outside of Simsbury traffic passing through. But I think if we have the gateways to the town center, speed limit reminders, oh, and yeah. in every crosswalk Absolutely. we have you know, the thing that they put out there, because it's not consistently like that, it continues to be a reminder for people. Mm -hmm. Also, you do need to get a state permit to put out those little things, because we met with Ethel Walker and they had an issue over by there. State over there, but yep. the thing, simple solutions are simple, right? But they are so complicated with the state. But you're right to look into it and be consistent. I think it's a great. I just idea. don't want it because we continue to promote our walkability, yeah, and it's important to the character of our town. If you can't actually do it safely, no, I agree. Well, um, yeah. It's a problem. The way you do it, which is there are certain towns in Florida, for instance, that are notorious. They have step down speed limits that go from 40 to 35 to 30 and they enforce it. So they're giving out tickets all the time. And when you drive through those towns, you see no. the people doing 25 miles because it gets around that you're gonna get a ticket. 
I think that's one of the ways that we have to have a bigger presence and give out a lot of tickets to, to get that message across. Because when people come through and they see, you know, an officer pulling somebody over and giving them a ticket, they're going to remember that the next well, time. Well, they had a check on, on the front of the library yeah, a couple weeks that. ago regarding cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, they were pulling over. Yeah. I mean, you got to just do more of that. That's all. I've Mostly seen adults, but you got to do more. I've seen police officers holding a cell phone yeah, yeah, up in Simsbury. Right. So but it's like they need more. to be a leader about that. Yeah, no, but you got to do you got to do more of it. And uh, I agree. If you send a, a note to them, <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe that'll slow people down. It, it's kind of like that European concept where you know you come to the center of town and the roads are so narrow and everything is so confined that you, yeah. you slow down naturally. But yeah. what's the speed limit in Europe to the center of town? It's like ten or fifteen miles an hour or something right. like that. Anyway. Very cool concept. And enforcement is so strict and the tickets are so high. Yeah. Everybody obeys. Exactly. In yeah. Germany especially. There's just no no fool around mm -hmm. that. Exactly. Just another note about the traffic issue. We have a lot of temporary signs on Route 10. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> to the point where it is unsafe to pull out of some of the shopping areas because you can't see <coughs> um, when you're pulling out because there's sign after sign after sign yeah. on some properties. Um, and I know they're temporary signs, and I, that might not be your department, but no, I it think is, it is. And we're, we struggle constantly with the building, you know, with the business <coughs> folks that want to have a sign. Mm -hmm. We tell them you cannot put it where it's going to obstruct sight lines. Mm -hmm. Well, some people listen, some people don't listen. Uh, some of them, what, one of my pet peeves is putting those signs in, in the sidewalk where they encroach mm -hmm. into the sidewalk. Someone is going to trip on those signs, mm -hmm. and there's going to be joint liability going around. So we tell people, don't put the signs in the sidewalk or in an area that's walkable. But you're absolutely right. In front of the library now, for example, there's a number of signs. Now, some people are upset that there's so many signs, but again, you try to tell one of those organizations or one of those business folks that they can't have a sign because there's too many, you have another argument on your hands. So it's a, it's a real balance, on, but we do understand what you're talking about. So. And we, the code enforcement also continue to work on that on a daily basis, goes out and reminds people not to be. <coughs> okay, with that, do we have a motion for adjournment? Motion. Yes. Second. 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 All in favor, thank you very much. Aye. Aye.